Hola, ¿qué tal amigos? Buenos días, buenas tardes y buenas noches. No importa la hora que sea, siempre es un gran momento para estudiar español con Profesor Pablo. All right. Now, you know they talk about a baby starts off with formula and then goes to puree and then it gets to whole food. Well, we're kind of the same way in a foreign language. We started off basic, we've been building up, and now we're ready for some heavy-duty nuances. I'm going to show you something that's going to be very interesting. Our lesson is decir en pedir, and we're going to take a second look. We learned in our last lesson the present tense of both decir en pedir, and we also wrote down the preterite of decir en pedir. Why the present and the preterite? Because with these two verbs, decir en pedir, that's where they're most often used in the present and the preterite. But we want to show you now that you can use them with all sorts of different tenses as well for the same reason. We're talking subjunctive. What do we know about subjunctive? Our analogy is you got a trailer, you want to tow it, you need a trailer hitch, that's always going to be the word K. The trailer is either going to be present subjunctive, opposite vowel, verb number eight, or past subjunctive, verb number nine, which is ada y yera ending for almost 99.9% .9 of the verbs in the Spanish language. The only few that aren't I-E-R-A, you might find a jera, like dijera, tradujera, right? The J verb, right? Uh, condujera. Also, fuera, F-U-E-R-A. Very few exceptions to ara y yera. <clears throat> so, the first part of a subjunctive sentence is, is the tow vehicle. And your tow vehicle is a certain type of verb. Not every verb can tow a vehicle. So it's got to be a certain type of verb. We call them provocadores. A provocador is a provocateur. It is a causing agent. It is a stimulant, something that causes and brings on the use of the subjunctive. And here, pedir and decir certainly are two of our top provocadores in the Spanish language. Later on, we're going to learn a lot, something more here about decir. There's a big difference when you say, I'm going, to, I'm going to tell him that versus I'm going to tell him to. We're talking here about telling someone to do something or asking someone to, you're asking someone to do something. Telling someone to do something or asking someone to do something. So as we move on with our lessons, now we're going to start looking at a subtlety here or there. Una sutileza, a subtlety. All right. There are four parts to what we're doing here. We're going to take a pronoun. They happen to be called indirect object pronouns. We don't care about that. We're going to take one of these pronouns. We're going to take one of our verbs, and then we're going to take our trailer hitch K, and we're going to take our subjunctive at the end. Remember, this is a four-step process, but subjunctive sentences stereotypically are a three-step process. The tow vehicle, the trailer at the end, and the trailer hitch in the middle. The tow vehicle, the trailer hitch, and the trailer. But now we're using a pronoun, so that's why it's a four-step process. So, in our last lesson, we learned how to say, I ask her to help out. Le pido que ayude, opposite vowel, right here, verb number eight. Le pido que ayude. I could also say, I'm going to ask her to help. Le voy a pedir que ayude. I can take the future and say, le pediré que ayude. I will ask her to help. And finally, we could say, I have asked her to help a lot. Le he pedido que ayude muchas veces. So, le pido, le voy a pedir, le pediré, and le he pedido. All of those bring on the present subjunctive. Let's go over here with decir. I could say, uh, I tell her to go to school. Le digo que vaya a la escuela. I'm going to tell her to go to school. Le voy a decir que vaya a la escuela. I will tell her to go to school. Le diré que vaya a la escuela. I have told her to go to school a million times. Le he dicho que vaya a la escuela un millón de veces. So you see with these two clusters here, we're going to follow with the K in the present subjunctive opposite vowel. <clears throat> Down here, we're going to find out these bottom clusters that have preterite, imperfect, and conditional. Stereotypically, we're going to follow with the past subjunctive, right, with a K in front. However, we're going to see that the conditional could bring on either verb number eight or verb number nine. 
This is a nuance, a subtlety, but you guys are ready for it. The same thing here, pedería, could be followed by verb number eight or verb number nine. It happens to do with immediacy and urgency, as opposed to something that's less urgent and less immediate, kind of not on the front burner, on the back burner. Okay, let's do some examples here in the past. I asked her to come to the party. Le pedí que <clears throat> vinieron is the ellos preterite. Change that O to A, vinieron. Now you have the ellos, ellas form of the past subjunctive from which you build all five forms. Take the N off. That gives you viniera. That's a yo form. That's a el ella form. The two form, add an S, vinieras. The they form, put the N back on, vinieron. And the we form, put an M-O-S on viniera. Vinieramos, and go back three vowels and put an accent mark. <clears throat> I asked her to come. Le pedí que viniera. I used to ask her to come all the time. Le pedía que viniera. Let's say you had uh, some club meeting at your house once a month, and she never came. Nunca vino. But you said, siempre le pedía que viniera. I always asked her to come. How about I was going to ask her to come. Le iba a pedir que viniera. I was going to ask her to come. Le iba a pedir que viniera. Now here, <clears throat> le pediría que viniera. That's the textbook way. Conditional. It's going to bring on the past subjunctive. No argument there. I would ask her to come. Le pediría que viniera. Let's say you're talking about something off in the distance, not urgent, not immediate. And say, yeah, I would ask her to come. Like, let's say... There's going to be a, a special gathering in a month and a half. You say, I would ask her to come. Le pediría que viniera. But let's say that meeting is today. It's immediate, immediate. It's urgent. And you could say to your friend, wow, what about Mary? Y Mary? Y María? You say, ooh, yo le pediría que venga. I would ask her to come. Like right now. I would ask her to come. Meaning right now. Le pediría que venga. Isn't that beautiful? Down here. I had asked her many times to come. Le había pedido muchas veces que viniera. Now, había in A come from the verb haber, H-A-B-E-R. The verb tener is to have, right? To have to do something or to have an object, a noun, right? Haber is followed by verb number two, the past participle. That's why you see here, pedido, I-D-O, and you see pedido here, okay? I-D-O. And, of course, dicho and dicho, those are irregular past participle number two. All right, let's try some more examples here. Let's go with this here. I, let's say uh, you have a friend who's sick, smokes too much, and you're trying to help him break the habit. It's just a health issue. It's not a character issue. It's not a personality issue. It's just a health concern, right? So you say, I tell him not to smoke. It would be le digo que... No fume. I'm going to tell him not to smoke. Le voy a decir que no fume. I will tell him to not smoke. Le diré que no fume. I have told him not to smoke. Le he dicho que no fume. Now, some people ask Pablo, what's the difference between voy a decir, I'm going to tell him, versus le diré. Le voy a decir o le diré. You know, at home as a kid, mom says, Clean up your room, limpia tu cuarto, and you say, okay, mama, lo voy a hacer, I'm going to do it, lo voy a hacer. Then mom comes later or the next day and looks at your room, it's a mess, and she says, ¿Qué pasó con tu cuarto? No lo limpiaste, mijo. What happened to your room? You didn't clean it up, my son. And he says, ah, lo siento, ma, mama, lo haré hoy. Now he uses the future, because when you use the future, it's like a little more definite, a little more serious, there's a little more commitment to doing whatever you say in the future. Like someone says, uh, Cuando vas a pagar? What are you going to pay? Voy a pagar mañana. And then you don't pay, and then the person comes, Cuando vas a pagar? Lo pagaré hoy. Pagaré. It just adds a little more uh, oomph to the certainty of something happening when you use the future. Again, these are the nuances that you're going to pick up learning to speak Spanish. And these nuances develop as your understanding and your language learning module starts putting you on autopilot, on self-drive, it starts doing a lot of things on its own and it processes things. Plus, you're going to hear people use certain things a certain way and you think, wow, they use the future instead of the era plus infinitive. Why is that? You're going to start picking up on those things. 
Okay, let's come down here. I told him to not smoke. Le dije que no fumara. I used to tell him not to smoke. Le decía siempre que no fumara. I was going to tell him not to smoke. Le iba a decir que no fumara. Let's say he went to a party last night and he smoked and there was an incident and you said, I'm sorry, I was going to tell him not to smoke. Lo siento. Le iba a decir que no fumara. Le diría. Let's say there's an upcoming party and you got your brother that he just smokes, he's a chain smoker, and you just don't want smoke at the venue and you say, you're for your advice from a friend. ¿Qué le dirías tú? What would you tell him? Le diría que no fumara. I would tell him to not smoke. Let's say he's just coming to the party and he's starting to smoke already, just outside, outside the door. And you want to say, Ay, amigo, ¿qué voy a hacer con mi, con mi hermano? What am I going to do with my brother? And the person could respond this way, with verb number eight, opposite of a, Le diría que no fume. I would tell him not to smoke, right now. Le diría que no fume. I would tell her to come, like right now. Le diría que venga. Le diría que viniera. More distant, further off, right? Not crucial, not immediate, and not urgent. So these are some subtleties that you're going to pick up on. Most of the time between voy a decir and diré, most of the time between era plus infinitive and the future, we choose era plus infinitive because there's no pressure, there's no stress. We're just making a statement of what's going to happen or what we're going to do. For example, you say it's going to rain tomorrow. You don't say it will rain tomorrow. Yo verá mañana, like you're God and you're giving a command. It will rain tomorrow. No, you say, va a llover mañana. It's going to rain tomorrow. So we use the era plus infinitive most of the time. But there is a use for the future. Okay, okay. I'll bring it tomorrow. Lo traeré mañana. Just remember, in English, when you say will, in Spanish, you're going to use future. For example, I'm going to be there. Voy a estar allí. I will be there. Estaré allí. So that's the difference between the era plus infinitive and the future. So, again, how can you use present subjunctive or past subjunctive after the conditional? Textbooks won't talk about the option to use verb number eight. Let's take me gustaría. That's conditional. I would like for her to go. Me gustaría que ella fuera también. You're talking about a trip this summer coming up. Uh, abroad to Europe, and you say, me, me gustaría que todos fuéramos. I would like for all of us to go. But let's say the trip is right now, uh, and there's an opportunity for a whole family to be scooped up and taken on a trip, and you say, me gustaría que todos vayamos. It's, it's immediate. It's urgent. It's now. It's here. It's upon us. For example, let's say there's a situation, uh, uh, a situation in, uh, amongst people, and you want to get to a resolution. Um, let's say if it's next week, you'd say, yeah, I would like for her to come and talk. Me gustaría que ella viniera y que hablara, and to talk. But if she's right outside there in the house, and you say, oh, I'd like for her to talk right now. Me gustaría que hable ella, ahorita, ahorita. So, after the conditional, <clears throat> if you're talking about something that's urgent, immediate, like right now, upon you, yes, you can use present subjunctive verb number eight with the conditional. Traditionally, textbook Spanish is going to teach you conditional followed with past subjunctive. <clears throat> but we're way beyond the textbook. This is real Spanish for real people, okay? And as we do our lessons, I know what we're missing. I'll fill in those gaps and I will go back and start pointing out these subtleties to all of you, okay? Why do I have all five pronouns here? Because if you want to use pedir in another form, it makes sense to say like, they ask us to go to church every Sunday. That could be nos. Let's put this in the they form, present tense, piden. Nos piden que vayamos a la iglesia todos los domingos. Nos piden que vayamos. But with the yo form here, we're not going to say I ask myself. We're not going to say I ask us. It's I ask her or him or I ask usted, you. I ask them. Could you use te? Absolutely. I could say to my brother, right, we had a little disagreement. I said, look, I ask you every day to help out at home. Mom needs help. Te pido todos los días que ayudes en la casa porque mamá necesita ayuda. Te pido que, ma, te pido que ayudes. Todos los días te pido que te ayudes. Every day I ask you to help. 
en la casa porque mamá necesita ayuda because mom needs help. So you could, with the yo form, use the te if you're talking addressing a friend, you. Commonly, we're going to go with le or les. So let's take a look at this again. A second look. What are the two nuances that we learned? Well, we learned that <clears throat> nine times out of ten, between era plus infinitive and future, I don't know if it's nine times out of ten. It could be much more than that. But most of the time, people are going to go with era plus infinitive and just normal, communicative, relaxed, comfortable Spanish. When you use the future, you're being more definite and you're making a statement. I will be there. Yo estaré allí. When you say future, it's like you're making a promise. Lo pagaré mañana. I will pay it tomorrow. If you say, lo voy a pagar mañana, I'm going to pay it tomorrow. You know how we get. We all get busy and we put things off, right? But if you use the future, it's like a promise. So we learned that subtlety. Our next subtlety, sutileza. Sutileza with a Z-A. Is that you can use a conditional with the present subjunctive if you're referring to something that's urgent, immediate, right now. Here it is, upon you, okay? But just something down the line a little bit, not so urgent. The traditional, conditional, plus past subjunctive. There you go. What are these called? Decir en pedir, en es importante, es necesario, quiero que, necesario, es necesario que, espero que. All those are called provocadores. Remember, a subjunctive sentence has three parts. The provocador at the beginning is the tow vehicle, the truck, if you will. What comes next is a trailer hitch, and then the trailer is any, in all verbs in Spanish, can be a subjunctive trailer, any verb. But not any verb in Spanish can be a tow vehicle or a provocador. We've had some provocadores already. In our next lesson, we're going to deal with some sometimes provocadores, some phrases after which, if you're referring to something that has not happened yet or had not happened, <coughs> you're going to use the present or past subjunctive. Otherwise, you're going to use after it either the present, preterite, or the imperfect. We'll see how that works. Okay, <clears throat> these are the, they call them again, uh, indirect object pronouns. We don't care about that term because me, te, and nos are always going to be the same. Sometimes these will change from le, it might change to lo or la. Remember, lo or la can mean him or her, like I know him, lo conozco, I know her, la conozco. In Spain, though, they'll say le conozco. With this, perfectly fine. Different is good. Different is great. Okay? But the me, te, nos never changes. <clears throat> so le can go to lo or can go to la, right? And we know that lo and la can also refer to it, like I need it, referring to uh, the computer, la necesito. Right? Necesito la computadora. La necesito. Money, I need it. El dinero. Lo necesito. Well, down here it could be los or las. So the only difference would be here in the el ella form, in the ellos, ellos form. It could be le or lo la. Here it could be les or los las. And as we get to a specific example of something, we point it out to you. Here, what they say and pay there, the people you're telling and the people you're asking is described with this pronoun right here. All right, let's, let's give it a wrap. Subjunctive sentences have three parts. There's the provocador, or the tow vehicle, or the truck, whatever you want to call it. There's the trailer hitch, the K, and the subjunctive. Here we have four steps in the process because we're telling someone or asking someone, and that person that we're telling or asking is reflected by the pronoun me, te, le, nos, or les. Okay? Again, in your mind, three-part sentence is a subjunctive. It's the tow vehicle, which is the provocador, the word K, which is the trailer hitch, and then the verb at the end, any verb, is the subjunctive. And our two nuances, it off plus infinitive is much more common than future. Future is very definite. It's kind of like a promise, if you will. And then again, the conditional, Unlike what they're going to show you in a textbook, they're going to tell you after conditional, you're always going to use nine in the past subjunctive. But now you're at a point in your learning that I can start pointing out the nuances. And as we get others, it's going to start, it's going to, start to jive. It's going to make sense. It's exciting. You can use present subjunctive. If it's something immediate, it's very important, it's very critical, and it's like right now. There's an urgency. Okay? All right, decir en pedir, a second look. 
That'll do it for now. Hasta la próxima lección. Thanks for tuning in. Please like and subscribe. It helps get our lessons out to more people, people via the algorithm. So please like and subscribe. And I encourage all of you, if you haven't, go to Professor Pablo, 1S, ProfessorPablo.com. Check out my over 500 page ebook with nine different sections. It's all color coded, everything's organized extremely well. Um, you can use the promo code Pablo50, Pablo50, and get it for $15. 50% off the $30 normal price. Okay? All right, that's it. Hasta la próxima lección. Y uh, que tengan un gran día. Cuídense mucho. Y nos vemos pronto.